This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving Chuck you. Chuck Hines will have uh, Lady Raider basketball tonight, exactly 12 hours from now from here in Fayetteville over at the Bud Walton Arena as they take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. So uh, really, really anxious uh, to see this basketball game tonight uh, between these two teams uh, as uh, Texas Tech is uh, looking to get into what they call the Great Eight. I guess trademarks are on the uh, Sweet 16 because this is the Super 16 and the Elite Eight. Uh, So uh, we're looking to get to the... uh, Great eight. So uh, what, what's beyond Raiders. that? Is it the like the Fantastic Four? Or what? I, I don't know if it's. I don't think it's the Fab Four because I think there was. A, I think they've got one of those, right? Yeah, they, they have. A, even though, even though, choice. If the Beatles were were playing in my backyard, I would, I would, I would shut both the doors because I just, I got, I got zero, zero interest in any of those cats. Um, Lady Raiders are 20 and 14 on the season, three and seven away from home. Arkansas, 23 and 12. They went seven and nine in the SEC. So we'll we'll give you some thoughts on that. The, the big concern tonight is three point shooting. You got to run them off the line. But let me just say this: I, I've been this is my tenth year doing Lady Raider games, and while I haven't traveled to every game every year uh, over the last oh, I'll say three to four years. Um, I've, I've, I've traveled way more extensively uh, under Coach Stallings and now Coach Gurley, and I did with Coach Curry as well. Um, but, man, I, I have not seen a team as together and as um, as loose uh, and as, like, just, I think, just anxious to play and um, anxious to be around each other. And I'm not around these girls all the time, but just, man, it was – it was. We have a little bit longer ride from uh, the hotel mm-hmm. uh, to the arena than than normal. Like sometimes, like in in uh, Lafayette, we were right across the street, so the ride was you know thirty seconds. But you know, our ride was about 10, 15 minutes. And I mean, they're uh, they the coach Gurley put uh, music over the over the air, uh, over uh-huh. the, kind of the speaker. You know, the "We Will Rock You" the, by Queen, and I mean, they're back in the back of the bus singing "We Will Rock You." Then they <laughs> put on this basketball. I can't remember the name of the song. It's some kind of basketball song, but it's, it's a, and there's like a, it's like a, there's a little bit of rap into it. And she, and she got on Is the it mic called and rap to it. Basketball by yeah, Curtis Blow. Yeah, yeah. It's called basketball. It's called we basketball. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah and, no. and, and Coach Gurley did that. She got on the mic and she said, We're playing basketball. We're playing. I mean, and everybody just went crazy. And then, and then, uh, and then, and then last night they had a little film session and, mm-hmm. And they broke off in twos and, you know, kind of talked about, you know, asked each other really hard questions about relationships and who influenced you the most. And, and, um, you know, what's, what's, what's your, what's your weakness and what's your, you know, what's, what are you most proud or not most proud of for the season? What's your highlight moment? What was your down moment? And it was just all, all built on building relationships and interconnectivity. And, and I think all those things are so important with, with teams and, and even with, you know, associates in school and, and work and stuff. But, man, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen tonight, um, but I'm excited. Uh, I mean, they, they could get blown out uh, or, they could, or they could win and then we're off to Lawrence. because, And this is the first time on a trip where we have left Lubbock and we don't know when we're coming home. And that's kind of exciting. I mean, my understanding is if we lose tonight, we're coming home tonight. My understanding is if we win tonight, we're coming back and checking back into this hotel. At least that's my understanding as of right now. And then going to Lawrence in the morning because KU beat Nebraska last night. And so um, there's I don't think there's any chance of hosting at this point in time because okay. uh, Kansas is the higher seed, blah, blah, blah. And um uh, and, and and they would have to beat you a third time. And look, they're good. I mean, they've they've got a a, a center that's good. Um, they've got guards that can shoot. But uh, man, I'd I'd love to have the opportunity to play them one more time because you never know. I mean, look at look at Princeton. You know, look at look at FAU last night. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, look at um, some of these other teams that have just they they play cohesively. And um, you know, one of the one of the challenges you know for the Lady Raiders right now is just 
you know, there is injuries. But, I mean, the seniors have kind of loaded this team on the back and then on their back, and then the freshmen have really stepped up, especially Bailey Maupin off the bench. So we'll see. Uh, we'll have it for you at 6.30 tonight on 107.7 Yes FM, and the tip will be at 7 from Bud Walton Arena. But it was really surreal last night being in that arena with the men's team uh, for Arkansas playing in the Sweet 16. That was kind of wild. Just kind of thinking about it. It's like, wow, this is this is kind of cool. I was you know? just happy to uh, see the result in the men's game. It was, it was nice. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> I'm not right, a big Eric get... Musselman guy for whatever reason. I just – Okay. Well, the theatrics. Well, their... You probably love him as much as he takes his shirt off. But... No, no. <laughs> you know, I had uh... – I had a couple of people uh, kind of comment to me like, hey, uh, you know, if they win, you need to jump up on the table and take <laughs> off your shirt. And I, I am I, I want to assure everybody I am not doing that. tonight. I, yeah, I think you can't do that unless uh, okay. unless you're not, one in the whole kit and caboodle. I think you, yeah, no. Yeah. I think yeah, they, no, it was a, uh, yeah. You can't do that no. for a, a trip to yeah. the grade eight. That's going to yeah. be a, yeah. a WNIT title thing. So uh, they Jeff confirms for us Fab Four is what they do call it. Fab four. Okay. Fab four for if you get <laughs> to the uh, WNIT final. All right. So what what about uh, this this baseball series this weekend? How how excited are you for this? Because it's first true road test for the ba- baseball team. You come off a, a series win over Oklahoma State, and man, I, I I feel like this is a different type of baseball team than what you've had the last couple of years, just because of the amount of offense that they're they're throwing out there. Yeah, you know, I, I I'm excited, but I'm a little nervous because there's been a lot of weeks weekends. Or you've gone down to Austin under Tim Tadlock as an underdog and come away victorious. This time you're you're pretty clearly the favorite. Uh, I think Texas okay. Tech is the favorite in this series, um, and this is a Texas team that is not just not that imposing. Most of the time, uh-huh. Texas has a bunch of big guys, great looking kids that will get drafted high, and then they've got massive arms on the mound that uh, are really daunting. This time around, it, it, it's just not the case. They've got a few really nice pieces sprinkled in, but it's it's not really across the roster like it is normally for Texas. So um, this this is one where the the Red Raiders should. I think it's a disappointment, which is kind of crazy to say that the expectation is to go on the road and win two of three in Austin. But if you don't win this series, I think it does. It is kind of a disappointment. So. Um, I, I look at where Texas Tech is this year and 18 and four. The one thing that makes me nervous is almost all of that has come at home. So it, uh, this road sure. trip uh, has got me a little bit nervous on can this offense travel away from from Dan Law Field? You know, Jamie Jamie brought that up uh, as well, and I'm like, well, you know, at Minute Maid, I said, was it was it about playing in a big league ballpark? Was it about the roof being closed? Um, and he, of course, he kind of dismissed those kinds of things. He brought, he said, maybe the big, big league ballpark a little bit, but um, I mean, you'll you'll face a lefty tonight, Lucas Gordon for mm-hmm. Texas. He's two and zero with a one thirty seven ERA. Brendan Gurton for Texas Tech, two and zero with a four fifty ERA. And um, I mean, he he talked about how Gurton just needs needs to pitch better and yeah. go maybe a little bit deeper into the ball game. Yeah, I, I think there's no doubt. The first outing we saw Gurton this year was in relief and that was his best outing since then he's kind of gradually gotten a little a little worse um he's he's walking too many guys is is where you've got to avoid that the free passes i think that's the the key to the whole weekend for texas tech texas isn't just a great offense this year the teams they've beat up on are the manhattans of the world and just a lot of not very good baseball teams um, in the RPIs in the 250s to 300 range. But if you give them free bases, give them extra opportunities, that's where you can really hurt yourself. So um, probably on paper, these should be fairly low scoring games that you're going to try to edge out. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. It's March the 24th, 2023. Here is Jeff McGuire with this day in sports history. Going to start in 1936, gentlemen. Detroit Wed Wing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
<clears throat> Have some more vodka. Yes. Make straighten it out. <laughs> Detroit Red Wings beat the Montreal Maroons one to nothing in the sixteenth and sixteen minute thirty second mark of the sixth period of overtime. Wow. It was a record Stanley Cup playoff game that lasted nine periods, a total of 176 minutes. Well, they played the playoffs this early. <laughs> back well, then. you didn't have as many teams back it's then. Still, massive difference from now. <laughs> yeah, they played hockey when hockey was supposed to be played, Ooh. as opposed to June. 1956, the 110th. This is in 1956, mind you. The 110th Grand National took place. The race is best remembered for Devon Locke's inexplicable fall on the final straight, just 40 yards from certain victory. Dave Dick wins aboard ESB. Is this a horse race? This is, is this a horse track race. meet. Okay. This is a horse race. I was trying to. That's like is it a stock car race? Yeah. I was lost for a little bit too. Yeah, I was lost, but now I'm found. <clears throat> 1962, the 24th NCAA Men's Basketball Championship took place. Cincinnati beats Ohio State 71-59. to Bearcats win back-to-back -back national titles. That Oscar guy was pretty good. <clears throat> 1979, with 10 rebounds and 10 assists, the Spartans cruise to a 101-67 win by uh, Michigan, uh, past Penn, by Michigan State's Magic Johnson registering a triple double yeah. with 29 points. Heard that guy was pretty good. He's a magical choice. We'll let choice do the dad jokes around here. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> I liked it. Did you like I was lost or down found kind of deal? Did you like that too? <laughs> sure. 1990, Tom Hunter swims a world record 50 meter freestyle. 21.81 seconds. For comparison, Wait. the current world record is 20.91. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable how these some of these swimming records and track running records for sprints mm -hmm. um, are and, and like the 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 uh, long jump as well. How how it's it's not that significantly more today versus 50 years ago, given today's technology and nutrition and weight ability and all that kind of stuff. 2019 New England Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski, Rob, Rob, Rob Gronkowski announces his retirement as the three-time three Super Bowl winner. The tight end postseason record most receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. It is National Chocolate Covered Raisins Day. I, I can. I mean, I'm not going to buy any, but if there were some around, I'd, I'd probably have a couple. I think your uh, normal co-host is all over that action. Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm fine with them, but I don't think I ever seek them out. I you like know. raisinets. Which you is like exactly what those are, right? Like, like, yeah, it's basically exactly what they are. Yeah. But I feel like those are the cheating version of chocolate covered raisins. How so? They're literally chocolate covered raisins. Right, but it's you know. When I think of like actual chocolate covered raisins, I think of you melting chocolate and pouring over raisins. Mm. What? Oh, I've never done that. I, who in the history has ever done that? I don't know who who actually makes their own chocolate covered Someone raisins. Someone has out there. to because that's where we got the recipe from before machines. <laughs> it's been a while. Just saying. Okay, that's that's just crazy talk. Is what that is more mm -hmm. than anything else. <laughs> uh, we're gonna hold off on today's birthdays for a second because we got to get to one tomorrow. Former Texas Tech basketball player, Davide Moretti, turns 25 tomorrow. Hey, turns his number. Mm. Wow. Miss that guy. Still think about that. They were showing the replay the other night, and I was like, I it was maybe it was last night, of a ball, oh, the, the air ball. And I was like, oh, that's Davide Moretti player right there, kind of. You know, where we got kind of, I felt like we kind of got the screws to, put to us a little bit there by the, in the Final Four in the National Championship game. Mm-hmm. I think you're not the only one. Uh, today, that way. happy birthday to The Undertaker, who is 58. Peyton Manning, 47. Damar Hamlin, 25. Jessica Chastain, 46. Chris Bosch, 39. Allison Hannigan, 49. And Jack Edwards is 66. 
And on this day, in 1989, one of the worst oil spills in U.S. history begins when the supertanker Exxon Valdez, owned and operated by the Exxon Corporation, runs aground on a reef in Prince William Sound in southern Alaska. An estimated 11 million gallons of oil eventually spilled into the water. Attempts to uh, contain the massive spill were unsuccessful, and the wind current spread the oil more than 100 miles from its source, eventually polluting more than 700 miles of coastline. Hundreds of thousands of birds and animals were adversely affected by the environmental disaster. It was later revealed that Joseph Hazelwood, the ca uh, captain of the Valdez, was drinking at the time of the accident and allowed an uncertified officer to steal to steer the massive vessel. Steal, steal and steer. And that hey. is this day in sports history. Hey, I need another cocktail. Can you can you grab the wheel for a second here, Choice? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I, uh, okay, so can I, the Valdez, go ahead. Well, I was just going to – you finish this. There's one more I want to add after you okay, go so, on, Valdez. So, so, the, so the Valdez um, – that we're, I don't know if this is a, like it's an unofficial nickname choice for uh, Cameron Cameron Valdez. I've, I've heard, Cause, yeah, because sometimes when he runs, he gets in the games like so little this year that sometimes the P announcer would call him uh, Cameron Valdez, and so our our unofficial nickname for Cameron Cameron Valdez is excellent. And so I like gonna, it. I'm going to slip that to Coach McGuire the next time I next time I go to a media veil. I'm going to say, hey. Coach, I, feel free to steal this if you want. Now, Jamie is not – he has not approved this aspect of it. So feel free to steal this if you, if you want. But we're kind of calling uh, Valdez Exxon because they can never get his name pronounced right because they always call him Valdez. And I, I think Coach McGuire would be, like, all up in that. And he'd be like, Exxon, we're going to call him that because you got, you got Rabbit, you got, you know, all these other guys, Muddy, you got whatever, you know, the – Whatever the under you, there's an undertaker or the mortician or whatever they call one of the guys. Funeral director was Reggie Pearson funeral, last year. Yeah, fu funeral direction, right? You uh, also your guy that uh, Josiah Pierre is the water yeah. moccasin. Oh, it's the water moccasin. Yeah. Okay. Um, trying yeah. to think if there's. I mean, there's lots more, but don't you think Coach McGuire would like? To, he would like. He would wrap his arms around that and embrace it in a great big hug. I th I think he would be on board with it. Yeah, I think it'd be. Yeah. It'd be a fun one. Yeah. Exxon. Okay, you said you had one more? Oh, uh, one more on this day. Yeah. Sorry, I hope I'm not hijacking this, Jeff. But no, <laughs> this, this show, you can't hijack this okay, show. Good. Good to know. <laughs> uh, on this day in 2001, mm -hmm. Randy Johnson nailed the bird. Ah. This was, this was that nice. day where he, uh, he exploded training. the pigeon at spring training there. And the only video shows how far we've come on like what like watchability of games. The only videos, if you listen to the commentators, it's in French because they're playing. Uh, I mm. believe the Expos. <laughs> so wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, somebody off the pretty somebody off the Yates Morning Center chat line says yes, uh, yes. I'd love my name associated with a massive oil spill. Well, <laughs> that I, I know. Uh, Jordan has a really good question. Do we actually know what's in Jeff's strength this morning? I, I don't know. <laughs> we do, and you want some. <laughs> Coffee? <laughs> 6.54 this morning here on the morning drive. Great to have you with us. you want to give us a score prediction or a series prediction on, on anything? I mean, who knows? If you got something big going on, uh, we would love to uh, hear from you. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Regional Spelling Bee presented by our friends at Optimum. It takes place tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the YWCA. They're at 65th and University. If you want to come and see the kids sweat uh, or spell, uh, you can. <laughs> it's at uh, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. It consists of kids from uh, private, public, and charter schools. The winner and their parent receives a trip to Washington, D.C. for the National Spelling Bee. Choice, do you consider yourself a good speller, or are you considering uh, making your kids better spellers than you? <laughs> I would uh, put myself at above average. Above average. Okay. Yeah. How, are the, how are the choice children doing in their spelling? Yeah, they could be better. They could do better. <laughs> they, they, they could do better. Yeah. The uh, wife is definitely the best speller of the family. 
I would I wouldn't, expect that because she's a teacher, right? Yeah, but I wouldn't let her know that. I would. I still would. I don't think I'm being monitored. I would tell her I'm better than her. What grade does she teach? Fifth grade. Fifth. What's well, the? That's the grade right here. Yeah, it is. Why don't? Why don't we have? Why don't we have a representative from Mrs. Woodman's <laughs> class in this thing? What's What's going on with that? That's a good she question. Wants be, she uh, wants to be teacher of the year. She's got to coach these kids up for God's sake. The daughter tried for this and uh, came up short. So. Mm. She's a fourth grader, but she she, okay. she fell short. I can't remember what word she misspelled, but well, it was always next year. There is always next year. Of course, I mean your parents like misspelled your name. I mean they choice C H O I S, and so how could we expect any Woodman to exactly and be, be be good spellers? There you go. On, what's going on with that, right? Exactly. All right, do you have, you have a word for me in the uh, spirit of all this? <laughs> I do. In the spirit of all this, Chuck, your word is... Do you want me to... Uh, this random word. Do you want me yeah. to pronounce random. it the way you pronounce it or the way the normal world pronounces this? Uh, is it HODL? <laughs> it's not HODL. I'm not giving you one that easy. Okay. We're going longevity. <laughs> longevity. As opposed to longevity? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> L O N G E I T V Y. Longitivity. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have got as tickled as I did over that. But see, the, your mispronunciation mispronunci- has uh, hurt you there, Chuck. Okay, well, how does it spell? L O N G E V I T Y. Oh, E V I T Y. What did I say? I don't know. You threw in an extra I and... I threw an extra I, yeah. I, I think I, you said Q in there, too. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. <laughs> no Q. Elemental but. P. Um, oh, well. So I finished uh, three and seven. It's valiant uh, effort, Chuck. Will, valiant effort. Kids will do better than that tomorrow. And again, that uh, Lubbock Regional Spelling Bee presented by Optimum is tomorrow, the uh, 25th. It'll be over at the Y at 65th and University. And good luck to those kids. I'm really proud of them. I'm not... Yeah, we got a Tech Talk listeners kid uh, in there. Uh, hopefully, he's a Morning Drive listener too. Uh, okay. So, got to be careful not to to plug him too much because otherwise, people will think that we rig it for one of the one of our own. <laughs> in case they win, yeah. Yeah, in case they win. So, if the Tech Talk kid wins, it's not because we gave him cat and everybody else got, you know, scrumptious. You know. You want to spell scrumptious? Go after. No, okay. I don't want to spell scrumptious. I don't want. I, and, and it, what what really is sad is I, I pride myself on spelling. Okay, and um, I pride myself on getting things correct, even mm-hmm. in text messages or emails. And so I come off as a bit of a buffoon. But <laughs> unfortunately, that's kind of a a daily aspect of this show, right? No, Chuck. No. Okay. Entertainment so enjoy- is the aspect. Entertainment. Joy McGuire said yes. Said uh, da, 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 Tuesday publicly. Okay, and I've heard him say it publicly a couple of different times that last year's bowl team would be beaten by this year's team. What do you think about that? You know, I, I, that's probably the thing that caught my ear or eye the most. Of um, I know he said it when he was on with you guys. Uh, what was that? Two weeks ago. I, I was- I was at a I was at a Texas Tech alumni function, and he said he said this this year's team would yeah. beat last would would kick last year's team blank. Mm-hmm. He was even a little bit more emphatic. And he said uh, they win by fourteen in in the media yeah. availability earlier this week. Yeah. So that's it's eyebrow raising for sure. It's yeah. like oh no okay, the, makes you feel the, good, right? The bravado that you're talking about earlier. There's there's some bravado there. I think. Um, I think Joey McGuire, there's some coach speak to him, no doubt, but I don't think he no. he, he blows any wind up your skirt either. I, I think this no. is this is a guy that is not going to say something just to say it or to sell season tickets mm-hmm. or something like that. I, I, I don't think he says something unless he truly believes it. So yeah. um, it has me excited. I think it, it does that for a lot of the fan base as well. It's, it's something where I'm like, okay. If 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 he's saying that you're 14 points better than last year's team, uh, almost all of that in my mind is starting with the offensive line and where your offense is going to improve. Because I think your offseason pieces is the only thing that that's added in so far. You haven't even played much spring football. 
Um, and so your pieces that you've added give him that much confidence. One, you get Cole Spencer back. Um, and he was hurt all of last year. He was supposed to be a big part of your offensive line last year, but he's going to be back and healthy. The rusty stats guy from Western Kentucky uh, will be a big part of your offensive line and should give some flexibility to to uh, Coach Kitley and how he does the offense. And then you've got Dre McRae, who supposedly will step in and be your fastest player on the team or faster than any receiver you had last year or any maybe offensive player you had last year at all. So those all three right, pieces start. give you give you some confidence right there. All right, let's uh, let's listen to Coach Zach Kitley, the offensive coordinator. He was asked yesterday what group has taken a big step forward. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing that I'm seeing is already probably more continuity on the O line, just better communication up there, understanding when certain things are coming. Uh, you know, clearly, I think the quarterbacks are a lot more comfortable too, uh, just back there and, and seeing defenses and, and certain things we're looking at. So, um, I think those guys, you know, again, playing receiver in this offense is not super easy. There's a lot on your plate, and those guys have came in and again, we're throwing a lot of scheme at them early, and they're doing a good job of handling all that stuff that we did last year. Uh, more from Coach Kitley here. He is specifically on that offensive line. Yeah, again, just a lot. Of, it seems like they've been playing together for more than two practices at this point. You know, the camaraderie's great there. A lot of continuity between those guys already, it feels like. Um, they're hilarious. They're like a big family. You know, starting with Monroe Mills over at the left tackle. He's the kind of the goof of the group. And then you move to Sirius Cole to Goofy Rusty to, to those guys just all the way across the board. And so uh, – it's just it's already more like more glued in with those guys I feel like than we were last year, even though it's only been two practices. And, and you know, Choice, uh, Coach McGuire, we had him on a couple of weeks ago, and he he said the offensive line was going to be a position of strength. And, man, we all know that that position group has been anything but a position of strength. So with the way that he talks about it and the way that Coach Kitley's talking about it, man, it sure makes you feel good about what they've been able to, to put together in uh, – trying to protect your quarterback, Tyler Shuck or Baron Morton or whomever. If you went eight and five last year, despite having a pretty average offensive line, you won four games in a row down the stretch. So if you turn that weak position or one of your weaker positions on the offensive line position groups into a strength, and that makes this team fairly scary. Uh, I think the, the hopes and the, the high hopes that a lot of Red Raider fans are having going into next season are uh, pretty warranted if your offensive line is as they're building it up to be. What What's your early take, one, two, three, or four for Tech in the Big 12? <laughs> Finishing one, two, three, or four? Yeah. Uh, I would, you have it five. Uh, I would uh, – I'm a the eternal optimist, Chuck, and I – I'm a homer, no no hiding it. So I'll, well, I'll I'll go top three. I think you finished the league top three this year. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. All right, Choice, you know how this works. Today you get to ask a question of mm-hmm. me and Jeff and our fine, fine listening audience. What is in your brain today to uh, cue us about? All right. Chuck, I'm going to have us break out the crystal balls for this one and look ahead to uh, next season. Mm-hmm. All and, right. And you're, we're going to have to have fairly short answers because this is a big question. In the oh, big, God. In the big four sports, okay, mm-hmm. so for Texas Tech, in the big four sports, football, men's basketball, women's basketball, and baseball, mm-hmm. heck, we're still in baseball season, so let's go big three. Just football, men's basketball, women's basketball. What win total next year – qualifies as a successful season for each sport. Mm. Okay. All right. So um, for football in the regular year, a successful season. Okay. What can we look back on and say that that was a success? Okay. For football, eight. For uh, men's basketball, uh, I'm going to say, let's see if you go 10 and eight in the big 12. And you, I'll say, um, not counting postseason basketball, mm-hmm. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say twenty, and um, for the women, I'll say, let's see if they go. Uh, they went six and twelve this year in uh, in the Big Twelve. Let's see if they go seven, eleven, eight, and ten. I'll say uh, eight and ten plus another twelve. I'll say uh, I'll say twenty one. 
for the women. I'll yeah. say 20 for the women as well in regular season because they, they got to 20 now, but you had to win uh, mm-hmm. two games in the postseason to get there. So I'll say 20 regular season wins for both the men and the women. But I'll, I'll caveat, I'll, I'll deviate from that just by saying eight Big 12 wins and uh, 10 Big 12 men's wins for the men. Okay. So 8, 20, and 20 are uh, successful seasons. Yep. yep. Jeff? Oddly enough, I'm also looking at a number in all of them that are very similar. Uh-huh. Uh, for Tech Football, 7. <laughs> 7? That's what you did this past year. Hey, no, I did success. 5 this past year is what I predicted, and I was happy with 6, so we've upped it up okay. to 7 now where it would be a good season. Thank you for okay. paying attention, No, Chuck. he was saying Texas Tech did seven last year. Right, and I'm looking at your season. schedule, and I think it's harder than it was last year. Oh, my gosh, I think you're the only person that says it's harder than That's last fine. year. <laughs> it's fine. I also need to see the offensive line actually play against somebody that doesn't have their same uniform on for a while Okay. before I'm ready to buy in to say that they're the strength of the team. I trust Joey McGuire. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. I'm saying I need to see the <laughs> offensive line player before I pick him but we'll win more than seven games. So I, I think the, I think you're the only one in town that's going to acknowledge that he's not a bad coach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seven for basketball. I'm going to specifically limit this to Big Twelve play. Okay, because they're non-conference. They're going to run the table. They're going to play. Ain't nobody's. Ain't no guy. Uh, ain't, not no game people. We're talking white men can't jump players. With, you're gonna be playing in the non-conference. If you lose three of those games in the in the non-conference, it's a bad mm. season, and we should just work it all over at that point because we know what's coming. Bulldogs. So the let's USA go the seven in the Big Twelve. For After men? this past year, that would be a success. And for Lady Raider basketball, mm. seven conference wins would be a really great season for them. Remember, they won six this past year. Which would be one more then, right, Chuck? Yeah. So let's talk you, about success one step at a time. Okay. All right, choice. I think Jeff sets the bar a little low. <laughs> but right. uh, well, that's, that's just your opinion, man. I'm going to go with, uh, I, I think, eight. I like your number of eight, Chuck, upping it one from last year. I think that's the bar, the low bar for calling it a successful season. You go seven, it's like, well, I mean, you did seven last year, and this was supposed to be a better team than last year. Then I would be not disappointed, but it, I wouldn't call it a success. So eight, I, I like your number there. Um, 20 and 20 is the number I had in mind as well. I mean, for both teams, if you get to 20 wins, you are at minimum a bubble team in the NCAA tournament. At minimum. At minimum. At minimum. Um, yeah. depending on what you do in conference play, obviously, but if, and going to the men's side, I think 500, getting back to that 500 mark in league play would, would feel pretty good. Um, nine and nine again, gets you basically into the NCAA tournament. So, yeah. so yeah, 20 wins means you're back, uh, in the tournament, which is, is a successful season. And I think the, the Lady Raiders would be in the same same boat. You get to 20 wins, feeling good about that. And you've got some really nice freshman pieces that you should be able to build around for for future years. So No yeah. doubt. No doubt. So I, I think uh, I, I think if uh, the women win seven, uh, that will there'll be a bubble team or in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think if the men win nine, no question, in the tournament. Uh, eight uh, bubble team, depending mm-hmm. on which eight. Um, so yeah, so I think that would be, that'd be good. What's your, what's your thought now for, for baseball in terms of where they are? Um, is this a top two team in the big 12? I mean, would you be disappointed if they finished third at this point? Really disappointed? Um, you know, there'd be a slight disappointment cause you're in the driver's seat right now. Now yeah. it's, you got a lot of baseball to go, um, so it would be a slight disappointment if you're not winning the league or sharing the league title at this point because you just beat the other best team. TCU is a 10 and 9 this year. I know they've gotten a lot of love and they've beat some decent teams in individual games, but you have both of the top two other teams in the league at home this year, and that was OSU which you already played and TCU comes to Lubbock next weekend. So you're getting the tough part of the schedule out of the way up front. Texas is the mm-hmm. fourth best team in this league. 
Maybe. Oh, you, oh, you might have something to say about that. But if you happen to go down and win two of three this this weekend, Texas Tech should absolutely absolutely feel like you're you're winning the conference um, because then you have you have set yourself up for a ton of success. So I I think if you don't finish top two, it's it is a disappointment this season. Okay. But there's a lot of baseball uh, to be played. Injuries yeah. happen. You never know what's sure. going to happen. But looking at right. it from from the lens of right now, that's that's where sure. you sit. Uh, this from the Ace Morning Center chat line. So we're going to have an 18 game conference basketball season next year, or will there be more because we have new teams? I believe it's going to be 18. I believe that you'll play um, a certain number of teams twice, home and away, uh, home or away, and I think you'll play all the teams. But you're not going to play all the teams home and away in basketball. Yeah. It, uh, this does eight wins include a win or go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was, I was going to say we've we've seen one thing leaked. Nothing's been official, but it sounds like you'll play uh, five t- different teams. Let's see if I get this right. Five different teams home and away, or four different teams home and away, and then everybody else you'll play either home or away. Home or away, right? Yeah. Um, does the eight wins include a win over Oregon? If you beat Oregon, does the number change to be considered to be a successful season? Yeah, I mean, if you go three and zero in the non-con, let's mm-hmm. say you go three and zero in the non-con, then now you've got you've got nine games left. I mean, I think at that point in time, eight becomes the low low bar because you went five and four in the Big Twelve last year. I, yeah, I agree. I think eight eight would be the low bar at that point. I think mm-hmm. eight's eight's kind of feels like kind of the low bar heading into the season um i think your your floor for this team is seven and five um if if things are not going as well as you think if tyler shuck runs into injury um the the floor feels like seven and five i think the ceiling for this team is as many as 10 wins you look at the schedule it is not nearly as tough as as what you had a season ago the toughest part is is up front with Oregon, but looking at some of the road games versus what you've got at home. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Come to you this morning from our respective First United Bank studios, and I look forward to hearing from you today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line and the Visual Edge IT hotline. Lots of uh, sports activities going on. We'll have... Uh, Coming up today, Friendship Tiger Baseball as they take on a legacy uh, today down in uh, in Midland. And then also uh, tonight, we've got NCAA basketball. The Sweet 16 continues, and they'll uh, get everybody down to eight by the end of tonight. And then uh, Final Four uh, puzzles will be solved over the weekend. And then, of course, uh, Lady Raider basketball tonight here on Double T90, excuse me, on 1077 Yes FM. They take on Arkansas at the Bud Walton Arena. And then also tonight from Dishfalk uh, down in Austin, we'll have Texas Tech baseball as the Red Raiders meet up with the Texas Longhorns. And by the way, the friendship game on Sunny 97-7 today. Uh, So I look forward uh, to that choice. Uh, You had friendship legacy uh, yesterday uh, down there. So it's kind of weird, right? You got there, was it? Home, right, it's home yesterday. Uh, home yesterday. Yeah, road. there, there, there today. Correct. Home yesterday. Road today. Back at home. That, that's how they set up all the series this week or this year pretty well. Where it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's a it's a weird setup uh, because a lot of times in the past it was a Tuesday, Friday thing or a Tuesday, Saturday. But uh, it's more of a true baseball feel to it, where or it's a a weekend series so do you like it uh don't care for the travel as much if i'm being (laughs) honest but but sure sure i mean i'm i'm a baseball guy so i really do uh enjoy getting to to just kind of go through the series and right and Mm -hmm. it really i think uh shows you who the better team is in a weekend series so um it's i'm sure it's hard on these kids to an extent with the with the travel and uh, keeping up with the grades and that sort of thing. But I, I'm sure they love it as well. I mean, if you're a baseball we, player, we, you want to play as much as possible. Yeah. We talked about this yet the other day. We were talking about how it's hardest on the parents, you know, when, yeah. Cause what time's first pitch today? Six o'clock today. Now the, the two Odessa schools 
uh, mm-hmm. don't have lights at their stadium, so those have to start at at four thirty. I'm pretty sure. I don't want to speak completely inaccurate on this, but you know, right. don't let the facts get in the way of a good story, right? So sure, ne- never with this show. So I, uh, I'm pretty sure that Odessa Permian had lights at one point at their baseball field, and Odessa High didn't. And then uh, someone came out and said, this is unequal in the same district. So instead of building lights for Odessa High, they just cut the ones down at Permian. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's what, what because they have some poles out there that they just like put tie, put like uh, panthers on top of. (laughs) So in all, in all, in all things that make sense uh, for Odessa, that's what, what made sense the most. Yeah. It's like, Um, we'd rather not spend the money on putting lights up over at at Old High. So we'll just do it. Cut them down. Yeah. All right. So we'll have the game for you tonight on Sunny 97.7. And if you can't make it and you want to download the Sunny 97.7 app, download the Oldies 97.7 app and you'll have the Sunny 97.7 app, if that makes any sense to you at all. Um, So uh, be looking, just go to the app store, put in Oldies 97.7 and Choice Woodman at six o'clock will appear on your radio uh, with uh Friendship uh, Tiger Baseball today as they take on Midland Lee, really, is what they are. You know, I love – we talked about this the other day, and, and Jamie kind of dismissed it a little bit uh, we, back in football or basketball season. They call it Midland Legacy because they really still want to call it Midland Lee, mm-hmm. but they don't want to call it Midland Lee because they feel like it's politically incorrect, which it probably is, but it was Midland Lee forever and a day. So in, in our era of revisionist history – um, i.e. Cleveland Indians and Washington mm-hmm. Redskins, we're, we're, we're going to just, we're going to call it Midland legacy so that we can kind of operate under this cloud of anonymity and uh, obscurity. But yet we're really solid. We're really Lee. We're just calling it legacy because Lee is our legacy. Right. Yeah. And then they kept that the rebels sense. name and still <laughs> have a Confederate <laughs> soldier. mascot. So Meanwhile, it all, it all makes sense. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ole Miss, they're just still the Rebels, right? Oh, they're still they're the just, Rebels, yeah. Yeah, they're just they're just they're just still the Rebels. So, oh, yeah. we'll uh, we'll 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 see we'll see what. But the, like when what I, so I found myself, you know, in the conundrum. If I'm referencing the past of Midland Lee, it's still Midland Lee, right? I can't just go yes. change the past. Yes, the, yes. The current team's legacy. But if I'm talking about, yes. like I mentioned on the broadcast last night, that that's a good. A, good baseball history there and talked about there's a couple of red raiders on that team but they were lee rebels not legacy rebels and ty Coleman uh-huh. and bo blessy so yeah it's it's uh okay. it's like bob feller did not pitch for the guardians okay no he didn't lavar errington who's on two pros and a cup of joe which precedes this fine radio program every morning from 5 to 6 a.m he he played for the washington redskins he did not play for the washington football team or whatever they're called today. Okay. What if the, com- the, the, the commandos, the commandos, the commandos. Right. Right. So uh, somebody said, did I oversleep and tune in for Thetford Nashby? No. And I'm, I'm sorry for the political over <laughs> overview here, but it just, it just, sometimes uh, things just kind of like really kind of slay me. And I just go, oh, okay. I, I really, I really, really, really don't want to buy into what you're selling here because why don't you just be truthful about what you really want to be? You all know right. what it, where it all uh, started, Chuck? You remember the first one that really did this? Huh? The name change? The, huh. the Washington Bullets, because Bullets was Oh, yes, right. Yes, that's yep. right. Because they were the Wizards. Yep. And they, they felt like that uh, being the Bullets, they would it would cut down on random shootings if they changed to the Wizards. It really worked <laughs> very well, didn't it? Goodness gracious. <laughs> And that was like a cool name, the Bullets. I loved it. Oh, but, I love the Bullets. Yeah. Yes. yes. But of course, it was in the most... It had nothing to do with shootings. It had nothing no. to do with no, shootings. No, it didn't. But, but in our overreact world, um, sometimes we we uh, we overthink things a little bit too much, which we are never accused of, of overthinking here on this uh, fine program. All right, so we'll have Texas Tech baseball tonight. Are you jacked up for this series choice? Is this, this kind of like, okay... We're going to really see how the old cookie crumbles for the Red Raiders, right? Um, I, I have as much uh, hate for for the old guys and burnt orange as as the next Red Raiders. So yeah, well, I'm I'm thrilled for this opportunity to go uh, kick their teeth in. So hopefully Texas Tech can can deliver on that. Um, I, I 
I've loved what we've seen out of this team this year. It's it's been uh, it was cautious optimism at the beginning of the season because you weren't playing a lot of good competition. Um, but yeah. you've done it in the last couple of weekends against two good teams, Iowa. Uh, you won a series against them, and then and then of course Oklahoma State this past weekend. So you you've had your prove it moments, and Tech has proved it. So the the last kind of step of that is going and proving it on the road. Yeah. Um, and they, honestly, both of the last two teams you've played in Iowa and Oklahoma State are better teams than than what the Longhorns have been this season. So, this has been the Morning Drive podcast presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T ninety seven three podcasts at double t ninety seven three dot com.